All right, Larry, thanks. We are across the Hudson from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This crowd a few minutes ago stirred into action at the sight of their men in blue emerging from the MetLife tunnels. We're set to go as the Giants get ready to match up with the Detroit Lions. Now a play fake here on first down. And they didn't wait long to take a shot there, that's for sure, but it falls incomplete, and it's second down. He was looking for his big target, Brandon Marshall, and now it's second down. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion. And now they'll look at a third and two coming up. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. Shotgun now for Manning. And Ingram holds it in. A gain of 11 and a first down. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. You can hit him underneath now, yeah, can't Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taken with the defense will give him. Here's Perkins on first down, and he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Second down, throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. To throw is Manning, and this is going to be incomplete. The fourth-year man from LSU, Brad Wing, to punt it away. Back deep for the Lions, it's Golden Tate. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. up over the 25 to the 26. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? They go with a duel again. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And just like that, it's third down. So the Lions go backwards there. And unfortunately, that's something they saw a lot in 2015. They had the fewest rushing yards of any team in the NFL. 
And it's one of those dubious titles that no one really wants to claim. Even teams who say, well, I don't worry about running it because we throw it all the time. Being able to run it when you want to is a key to success in the NFL. And Detroit struggled doing that. And he connects with Ebron. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. Stafford finding his big tight end Ebron for a Lion first down. First and ten, Stafford. It's brought in left side by Tate. And down he goes just beyond the 35. And that pretty move got him some extra space to run. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll run it now out of the gun. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. They go back to Abdullah on first. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, usually you don't think of the quarterback coming in for a no-gain play, but that's what we had there. Nice tackle. Yeah, and how about the range, too? Coming from the outside part of the play, moving his way into the inside and making that play happen. No gain for the offense. Big play for the defense. Here's Stafford now on second down. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Stafford to Jones, enough for a Lion first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen. Um, Dula. Touchdown, Detroit. Amir Abdullah, 46 yards. And the Lions are going to take a first quarter lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Here's Prater now set to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The New York set to take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. 
On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame, get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. They go with Perkins again, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. First carry here for Shane Vereen. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense. But a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long. That he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. Now they'll throw it with Manning. That's oh, a screen pass. That's complete. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Now we've got a giant player here slow to get up after that last play. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. From the gun, it's Manning. And that is incomplete. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not force that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. Here's Brad Wing now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So out now come the Lions. They have to be thrilled with that first drive that got them the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice, in meetings, talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. And they begin the drive with a duel. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. Again, it's a duel. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. 
One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating them up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. To the right side, Eric Ebron. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, and people got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. A second down run for Abdullah. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Old school defensive tackle play dictated just stood up and danced with the guy in front of you. And if a guy came near, tackle him. New school, you don't want to just dance. You want to get past him, get upfield, and make the play in the backfield. A big time play there. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. So possession one ended in six. Possession two likely going to end in a punt. Yeah, that's okay. They've just got to get back to what they worked on in the opening drive and continue to make a few adjustments along the way. It won't be exact because the defense will make a few adjustments themselves. Just get back to your game plan. Here comes the Lions punter now. Back deep is Dwayne Harris here. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. The New York set to take the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? On first down, here's a handoff to Vereen. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. See if they stay on the ground for second down. On play action, it's Manning. And that's incomplete. Evan Ingram was the intended target, and it's third down. The Giants on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Working from the gun, Manning over the middle. He's got his tight end, Ingram. And they're going to get the first down here across the 15-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That was a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got he's to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free, and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. They stick on the ground. Again, it's Marine. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially, no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. The Giants on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. From the gun, Manning. 
And that is incomplete. There's so much precision in an offense, especially when you're throwing the ball. And in an out route, plenty of it. How about the quarterback hitting his back foot? Ball's out of his hands. Receiver making his break, making his cut. He's got to time up perfectly. Not always easy to do. Just let him a little too much. Yeah, I remember back in the good old days, I was talking to a quarterback, and he said everything they did was on the count system. So when he took a snap, he counted in his head for certain routes different time frames for each one and he knew if the ball wasn't out of his hand at that point he'd better eat it because the play was dead 12 yards on the return that time and the Lions will take over so here come the Lions now they're out in front last time they had to punt it away we'll see if they can add to their lead now they don't want to go out and, and punt it away again this team now wants to get a cushion put people away they want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone Stafford on first down the left side completion to Jones a gain of six there on first Second down, here's Stafford. Ebron's got it. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Eric Ebron's got skills to spare. They just want the production to equal those, and he needs some good health in order to get that done. Had 61 catches in 2016, battling an ankle. Yeah, the surprise, though, just one of those 61 hit pay dirt. Now a first down throw, Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. To throw on second down to Stafford. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. And five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. To throw is Stafford. This is Riddick on the screen. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. He loses five full yards to bring up Ford. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Here comes the Lions punter now. As he'll come on to kick this one away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. They'll start out with a run by Vereen. And he'll get this up only to about the 22. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. forward to about the 23-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven.
The Giants on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and seven. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Here's Brad Wing now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. On first down, Stafford here. Throw left side taken in by Galladay. And they're going to have this one up near the 30-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision, and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. On first down at Stafford. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. to the air Stafford on second down over the middle and it's incomplete Jared Aberderis the intended receiver and that takes us from second to third down so now third and ten a big play to start the drive but nothing since To the air again, Stafford. And that's incomplete. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? Here comes the Lions punter now, as he's on here to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Yeah, that's a 48-yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return. And it'll be Giant football first and ten. And the Giants ready to come out now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Now a first down run here. This is Vereen. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. And that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Manning to throw on second down. And that's going to be incomplete. The Giants on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and nine. Eight, seven, eight, eight, seven, eight. 
Operating from the gun. Manning. And this one is incomplete. Okay, let's, let's decide here. He was open, right? Not extraordinarily open, but open enough that if you're an NFL quarterback, yeah. you've got to make that throw, right? Yeah. That's got to be complete. Nine times out of ten, that's a completed pass. Yeah, uh, he missed that one and missed it in a big way. Here's Brad Wing now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. This is taken at about the 14. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And Detroit getting set to go now. now if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. They start the drive with Abdullah. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum, or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top, or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try to pick it up on third down. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, he came out ready to play. That's three tackles for a loss, Charles, only in the second quarter. And that's problematic for the guys trying to run offense because that means he's got a pretty good idea of what they're doing and is actually beating them to the point of attack and making those plays. Might have to think about some misdirection or something to try and get him away from the ball. Just beating the play clock, Stafford. Left side, and he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. down, Abdullah. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. to throw on second down. Stafford, he hits Riddick underneath. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They get 17 down to the 17, and it's a first down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. From the red zone now, Stafford. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Second and ten, Stafford again. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll get it here to the ten-yard line. Go, 
The Lions on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. Throwing again at Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. It's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. From the left hash, this from 37. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goal post. And the lead moves to 10-zip. So a little fortunate there because that one was definitely leaking right. Without a doubt, maybe about the width of a football or so inside that right upright. But he got it to go. Prater now will send it away following the made field goal. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Giants offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Throwing now is Manning. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Marshall, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. The Giants on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and 11. They'll run. It's Vereen. And he'll get this one up to the 26. And we're going to get another timeout called by the Lions. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Here's Brad Wing now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And this will be taken at the 13. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. and 10 Stafford oh he's got a man wide open complete 
And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. Give him 30 yards there. First down, Stafford. And his throw here is incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Stafford gives to Abdullah on the draw. And he takes it across midfield to the 45. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. Here comes the Lions punter now. He's been terrific so far. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Here's Vereen, and an alley to run. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. <laughs> And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It's a five-yard pickup, so essentially they get the penalty yardage back, and it's back to second and ten. Second down following the run. Stafford gives to Abdullah. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I know it's a cliche, and coaches always talk about it's a team game. We need all 11 to win. But let's face it, Detroit really needs Amir Abdullah to have runs like that all season long. He missed a lot of time with injuries, especially recently. Now, Theo Riddick wound up leading the Lions in rushing last year for just 357 yards. 
On first and ten, Stafford caught on the right side by Jones. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Play faked Abdullah. It's Stafford. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Lions on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This time they face a third and two. Throwing a Stafford. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Here comes the Lions punter now as he's on to kick it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> it's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter, and now if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action and make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. On second down, Perkins. And an alley to run. And he'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets them a new set of downs. It's really come into vogue to talk about the, the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time, we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? But where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double A-gap blitz, there's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, that A-gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. Whether it's what we call an even front or an odd front, and an odd front's real easy to figure out. If that guy is lined up over the nose of the center, typically that's an odd front defense. Odd number of people, meaning 3-4 versus the 4-3, which is an even front. You've got to control those guys in the middle. Whether it's the nose or the two defensive tackles in a four-man front, if those guys can't get moved, you cannot run the ball in the middle of the field. And in that play, they were able to actually take care of business. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Manning going to give it to Perkins, and he'll take this one down to the 36. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. The Giants on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and nine. Shotgun now for Manning. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. 
I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Rosas, for the field goal try. And quite a bit of pizza in this box. It's a 53-yard attempt. And this won't get there, won't be on line either. It's no good, off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. So the long field goal misses, and now the reverse. You're in a tough spot defensively. They'll start the drive at the 43. Now Stafford hands to Abdullah, and he'll get it down to the 47 here. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Now that was an excellent run, and when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block, but the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes, so when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you kind of hit the jackpot there. Here's Stafford. A dump off for Abdullah. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. So here we go, first and ten now. Now the Notre Dame man, this is Theo Riddick. Not much there, maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Back to throw, Stafford. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Matt Asiata there out of the backfield, and it's third down. The Lions on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and eight. Now Stafford. Now they go screen, it's complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Five yards on the screen, but that'll take us to fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Now it's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. Now back to throw. Finding fouls complete. And they're able to pick up the first and keep possession. A big play there on the fake field goal. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. Would have been a long kick. It was prime fake field goal territory. They faked it. They got it. So much for defense in this situation because the natural play there is you go into what we call safe. Meaning, you don't really rush on that one. You almost concede it. They want to kick a long one like that. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. Amir Abdullah, his second touchdown of the night. And the Lions add on to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game.
Here's Prater now set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. And they're able to get this one across the 35. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Really good, solid run right there, and they did it from a four-wide receiver set. And if you're an offensive coordinator, they used to tell people, hey, we're going to throw the football. Now they use four receivers on the field to spread things out, give them more running lanes and more options, and also it usually takes the bigger defenders off the field, makes the defense lighter and easier to run against. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Perkins on the give from Manning. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. And that's another stop for the defense, something we've seen all game long. They have been on fire today. No matter what's called by the offense, they've had an answer for it. So two plays with only negative yardage to show, and now it's third and 16. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. I know in most cases, people think you throw the ball in this situation, and when they ran, it almost felt like a little bit of a surrender, maybe a give up, but I don't know if that's really the case. They might have been probing a little bit, checking the defense and filing it away for later. They might have something working later on. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Lions are going to take over with a long field ahead and a first and 10. The Lions offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Here's Abdullah. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Most players that tell you that night games, while they can be fun, they're really hard to prepare for because you wake up on game day, and all you want to do is get to the stadium and let's get going. But you got to bank that fire a little bit and hold it until the evening. It's almost like a Broadway premiere. Got to wait until the nighttime to go out there in front of the bright lights. And boy, has he harnessed himself really well. And now he's unleashing it on the opponents. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. Stafford and Tate's got it and he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47 a really nice pickup of 14 yards and it moves the sticks 
I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And a scary incompletion almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Back to the ground now. Here's Abdullah. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It's a pickup of six, and that is going to do it for this third quarter. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. From the gun on third down, Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. Here comes the Lions punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And New York set to take the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. His throw incomplete. Ten yards still left on second down. Throwing again. Manning. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. That one goes for 24 yards. That's just his second catch of the game. They wanted to keep him silent. They have kept him silent. Defensive football 101. Don't let the best player on offense beat you. Take him out of the game. They've done a great job of doing that. On first down, Manning toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time. That'll bring up second down. Basically, you're not going to outwork two guys very often. Double coverage. I thought he was going to go somewhere else with the football. I get it. That's a stud wide receiver. You want to try to get him the football. Yeah, sometimes you rely on him a bit too much. You forget the other options that are out there. Manning going to give to Perkins on the draw. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. The Giants on third down, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 10. Working from the gun, Manning, and that is incomplete. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Now Manning got to have this one. And this is incomplete. The Giants go on fourth but come up empty. And the Lions will get the football back in terrific field position. 
Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation... For one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. They've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's... Field. throw to get him for a loss of six great job defensively i think he was trying to go through his progressions find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it he was